Okay, for this problem, we're working on surface area. We are given z equals x squared plus y squared in a region R, which is a disk of radius 5 centered at the origin in the xy plane. So part A asked us to calculate the area element ds in terms of x, y, dy, and dx. So let's remember how we calculate this area element. First, I want to start by writing r of x, which is going to be a vector. And the three components are going to be x, y, and whatever the function of x and y is that makes up z. So here it's x squared plus y squared. And now I want to find rx and ry, which are just the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. So let's go and do rx. The derivative of x is going to be 1. But this partial derivative of y is like a constant, so the derivative of y is going to be 0. And then similarly, similarly for x squared plus y squared, we're only looking at the x squared, and the derivative of that is going to be 2x. Now let's find r sub y. So similarly, x is a constant, derivative is 0. The derivative of y with respect to y is going to be 1. Treat x squared like a constant, derivative of y squared is 2y. So now I want to find the cross product of rx and ry. I'm going to do it using a matrix. So the top row is ijk. The second row is rx. And the third row is ry. So I kind of want to think of it like a cofactor expansion almost. So to find the i component, ignore this row and take the determinant of this little matrix. Well, I'm going to get 0 times 2y minus 2x. OK, so I just have negative 2x. Now let's do j. It's kind of the same thing. Ignore the middle column. So I'm looking at a matrix 1, 2x, 0, 2y. So I have 1 times 2y minus 0 times 2x. Now let's do k. So here I'm covering up the third column. I'm looking at the determinant of this little matrix here. So I have 1 times 1 minus 0. So this is rx cross ry. And ds, our area element, is going to be the magnitude of this vector. So remember, this is kind of like using the distance formula. I'm going to have the square root of each component squared. So I have negative 2x squared, which is, well, take it one step at a time, plus 2y squared, plus 1 squared. And then it would be that times, well, dA, which would be dy dx. So let's go ahead and kind of expand things out. So negative 2x squared becomes 4x squared. Similarly, 2y squared becomes 4y squared. And, well, 1 squared is just 1. So this is my area element. And that finishes up part A. Let's move on to part B. So B asks to calculate the total area of the graph of F restricted on R. So this is just going to be the integral of ds over that region r. Well, 
Well, I don't know about you, but this looks like it's maybe not the best to calculate it in Cartesian coordinates. I'm going to switch to cylindrical. So remember, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So I can sub out that portion for an r squared. And then dy dx will become r dr d theta. And then that's nice because now I see something that I can use the chain rule for in a minute. But we still need to work on our bounds of integration. So I know I'm working with r and theta, and our region is a disk of radius 5 centered at the origin. So it's pretty easy to see that r is going to go from 0 to 5. And then our disk goes all the way around. So theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Well, let's go ahead and start integrating. So I see right off the bat that I'm going to need to do a u substitution. So. I'm going to say that u equals 4r squared plus 1. And that's going to give me a du of 8r. Well, I have the r and I have the dr. So I'm just going to have a 1 8 out in front to deal with this 8 right here. So now I'm looking at the integral of u to the 1 half. du d theta. But I need to change my bounds of integration. So I'm going to use this equation. Let's start with r equals 5. So I'm going to have 4 times 25, 100 plus 1. So my upper bound is 101. And then for my lower bound, I have r equals 0. So the 4r squared term drops out, and I'm left with u equals 1. OK, we're ready to integrate. So integral of u to the 1 half, add 1 to the exponent, and then divide by the exponent, or multiply by 2 thirds. I mean, I'm going to pull that 2 thirds out. And multiply. So I'm looking at 112. And I want to evaluate this from u equals 1 to u equals 101. Okay, let me go ahead and plug in. So for u equals 101, I get 101 to the 3 halves, which isn't going to be a nice number, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And then minus 1 to the 3 halves, which is just 1. OK, we're ready to integrate with respect to theta. Well, this is just one big constant. So when I integrate, I'm going to get all of this times theta. I'm going to evaluate that from theta equals 1 to theta equals 2. Yeah, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so it's pretty easy to see that when I plug in theta equals 0, I'm just going to get 0. So I'm only interested in the first term, which is when theta equals 2 pi. So I'm just going to plug that right in. So I'm looking at 2 pi over 12 times. 101 to the 3 halves minus 1. So I'm just going to write that a little bit nicer. The 2 pi and the 12 can cancel out to be pi over 6. So I have pi over 6 times 101 to the 3 halves minus 1. So that's my surface area.
And now we've answered both parts of the problem, so we're all finished.